Thank you, Paris. And of course, don't go anywhere because uh, we're coming up to you next uh, as we bring in the rest of our Spotlight Politics team to talk about Chicago's violence, the latest from Washington, and much more. Joining us now are Amanda Venicky, Heather Sharon, and of course, Paris Schutz. So, uh, Mayor Lightfoot is in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Conference of Mayors, where increased violence nationwide will undoubtedly be discussed. Here's what she said yesterday about getting more federal help. We also uh, need more resources from uh, the Marshal Service uh, to help us um, identify and find uh, fugitives, um, and particularly um, the tens of thousands of people who have outstanding warrants from, again, the Cook County Courts where nobody's looking for them. That can't be the full responsibility of the Chicago Police Department. Heather Sharon, does the mayor have a new strategy for fighting crime? Well, she has a four month old strategy for fighting crime. On Friday, she will present her so called victims justice ordinance to the city council's public safety committee for a hearing. That ordinance would give the city the ability to sue gang members to attempt to recover their ill gotten gains or profits that they have earned from their illegal activities. It is going to be a hard um, push to convince them because that measure as I said, is four months old. It hasn't gone anywhere, and it faces just a buzzsaw of opposition from civil rights lawyers, as well as uh, violence reduction advocates, including some of whom are very have been very close to the mayor. So she has got to convince the city council that this is the way to approach this issue, and we will have to see whether the concern about crime um, frees up this ordinance from the limbo that it's been in. Paris last night was a remarkably violent one, and according to one report, uh, some Chicago police brass are losing confidence in police superintendent David Brown. Does the mayor still have confidence in him? Yeah, right. this was a Sun-Times story, basically quoting some commanders, saying commanders do not have confidence in David Brown, but I don't see anything to suggest that Mayor Lightfoot has lost confidence in him. She's appeared in recent press conferences with him, and she has a lot riding on this. Obviously, the homicide rate was abysmal last year. It hasn't started off very good this year, but this was her big pick. And if she fires him or if he comes to resign now a year before she goes into an election season, it almost feels like a tacit admission of failure uh, on the violence front. So she stands to lose a lot politically if she does fire him right now. Her political fortunes are tied to him because, again, this this is the big agency that the mayor has control of, the Chicago Police Department, at least for now. And this was her pick, David Brown out of Texas. And of course, policing is something that she ran on, something that she had credibility in at when she was campaigning uh, for mayor. Amanda, she also poked at Chief Judge Tim Evans again in that press conference over violent offenders being released on electronic monitoring. They have been at loggerheads on this, we know. Um, is there a compromise or some way for the two of them to come to an understanding? I'm not sure what that compromise would be. The mayor has called for more individuals to be kept behind bars if they are accused of mostly violent crimes, but also weapons charges, even if that weapon was not actually discharged or used for a violent act. The chief judge saying that that does not meet constitutional scrutiny, that you are innocent until proven guilty, and that her policy would lead to too many innocent individuals being kept behind bars, that you need to kind of go to the, the, the denominator where if they are going to return to court, you need to keep in the public safe, but you cannot just put, lock everybody up while they are awaiting trial. So. Um, Maybe there would be some sort of compromise. I think the issue here is that we've gotten partial letters released to the public. What we have talked about before, what I think members of the public talk about, is that you really need to have here some sort of um, consensus, a relationship, coordination between the chief judge's office, between the state's attorney, between the mayor, between the CPD. Instead, it seems as if they are uh, loggerheads over both the policy and probably uh, you've got to figure some of their political futures way into this and it is just not getting done. Heather, is this whole argument, is it failing to, to get any traction with voters, members of the public? Well, it's really complicated and there have been so many 
figures and um, you know this person did this and then they were released for this amount of money it's really hard to sort of parse sort of exactly who's telling the truth and the, the Chicago Tribune did an in-depth analysis of the mayor's rhetoric on this issue and they found that she has presented um, misleading if not outright false information about the people who have been released on electronic monitoring after being charged with murder or attempted murder so I think that's part of the problem too people aren't sure sort of what actually is happening and if you ask the chief judge he says look there's there's no evidence to show that this is driving the violence in Chicago the mayor disagrees and that's where that dispute comes it's a zero-sum game you can't sort of say well maybe it's like we'll find a middle ground here and it's really hard for members of the public to figure out what's happening when you can't even agree on the facts in question and that's a problem so let's jump into some national politics here. President Biden held a rare uh, press conference as his signature Build Back Better bill floundering and the voting rights bills dead without a change to the filibuster. Here's what he said about Republican leader Mitch McConnell's opposition. I get out with Mitch. I actually like Mitch McConnell. We like one another, but he has one straightforward objective. Make sure that there's nothing I do that makes me look good in the, in the mind, in his mind with the public at large. Now, Paris, for the first time, President Biden said that Build Back Better should be broken up into uh, parts in order to pass um, as soon as possible. What do we know about what are the priorities? Well, it's hard to know what parts of Build Back Better would be able to pass because it would appear to uh, uh, overcome any kind of filibuster. You need to have 10 votes to end the debate, to enforce cloture. And as the president said, you know, he, may, he asked the question, what do Republicans stand for? What are they for? It certainly doesn't seem like they're for any part of this bill. I mean, things in this bill that have gotten bipartisan support in the past would seem to be extending the child care tax credit. That is a priority in this bill and of Democrats. It's something that Senator Mitt Romney has said he's supported in the past, but it certainly doesn't seem like any Republicans are, are going to put their name on supporting any aspect of this bill right now. And it also doesn't seem like Senators Manchin and Sinema want to move to change anything about the filibuster. Obviously, they're having that debate right now as, as it relates to voting rights. And Amanda, with inflation up, Omicron raging, the Democrats at odds, the GOP blocking Biden's priorities, president polling at a 40 percent approval rating. Give us a quick sense of what the midterms are looking like. Brennis, I think you answered it a bit right there in your question. There is a lot of turmoil in the nation. I think there are a lot of voters who are up scared, they're set, they're over COVID, but yet they can't be. Bills are stacking up due to inflation, supply chain issues. So it certainly is a very difficult midterm. And we already know going in, typically midterm elections are difficult for the party that has a sitting president. So um, it, it is going to be a, a a tough one, I think, for Democrats particularly as they look to hold any sort of control in Washington, that small margins that they have right now, not enough, as Paris just mentioned, to get their policies enacted. So it's certainly and, going to be difficult for that party. And as Amanda reported uh, tonight, the Illinois Supreme Court is weighing whether elected officials can use campaign funds uh, to pay for their own legal defense. Um, Amanda, you know, the, the Illinois State Board of Elections voted eight to zero that politicians could, in fact, use their war chest for legal defense. Does this have a snowball's chance of being reversed by the Supreme Court? You know, I don't like to presume at all what the justices will do. And of course, the State Board of Elections is an entirely different body. One that you had the attorney, uh, one, one of the attorneys say, you know, it is sort of different than most boards in that it is split evenly between Republicans and Democrats. By the way, the Illinois Supreme Court is not right there. And that it is a body that is created under the state constitution. So it has a little more authority, but it is a very different question that the State Board of Elections is facing than the Supreme Court does. And it's sort of interesting because one of the criticisms of the State Board of Elections is that they don't take proactive measures. Instead, they are really more a reactive body. You have to bring a question before it. So uh, I'm not going to presume where this will go, but certainly this is a practice that has long been used by so, politicians. And that makes me think that maybe the court's not going to overturn it. So let's move over to the race for Governor Paris. Aurora Mayor Richard Irvin makes his bid official. First, tell us who he is. Aurora mayor, uh, obviously. And well, is he really a Republican having voted for Democrats? Well, that's a very interesting question, and it was an interesting choice. He's got a very compelling personal history. We've interviewed him before. 
grew, born and raised in Aurora, public housing, prosecutor, alderman, and now mayor. He has pulled Democratic ballots in several recent elections. He's taken positions like supporting sanctuary cities. He has said in the past he fervently supports Black Lives Matter, but then in his campaign role, he said all lives matter. And in certain contexts, that can be a very loaded phrase. Seems all but certain at this point that Griffin, and they've announced an entire slate of ticket uh, of, of of candidates here for, for office here is going to be the candidate of, of Ken Griffin, the state's richest resident, even though Griffin is saying, well, I haven't met him yet. But Griffin put out a statement saying he had such a compelling history and echoing a lot of the things that Irvin said. And, you know, so much of political campaigns is optics. When I look at him and Avery Bourne and their pictures and stuff, I, I see the top five constituencies that they're going for here are suburban women, suburban women, suburban women, suburban women, <laughs> and suburban women, and, and almost to the point where I don't think they care if they get much of the more conservative vote south of I-80. I think they're going to hammer things like public safety and taxes and, and hope they get... It makes sense because, you know, this is a blue area, but the most Republican voters in number is in the Chicago area, so... That's the strategy that they're banking and, on here. And Heather, meanwhile, uh, billionaire Governor J.B. Pritzker has given uh, his own reelection bid $90 million, $90 million. Uh, And we're already seeing campaign commercials featuring uh, one of your Chicago Tonight anchors, whether we like it or not. Is campaign season getting earlier and earlier? So it's actually not. It seems to me like we just had an election. I'm still recovering. I'm exhausted. But they are out passing petitions, which means that the election itself is right around the river bend. So we are just in the thick of it. And it is going to be a hard fought, very expensive race. You will see all of the ads all of the time, especially if Ken Griffin does get behind the, the, the Republican ticket as we expect. And it's going to be fought on a number of issues, COVID, taxes, pension, the future of Illinois. And we actually had Governor and Pritzker. Crime. And, and crime. crime. And crime, absolutely. And we heard Governor Pritzker sort of take the first veiled shot at Irwin today, saying that he hopes that anybody who wants to be governor of Illinois will take questions from the news media about their plans. Of course, and of course nobody had a chance to, to question the, the newly GOP-named uh, ticket. So I we'll see. Obviously, we're all waiting on that. Uh, that's Spotlight Politics. Amanda Venicky, Heather Sharon, and Paris Schutz. Thanks, guys.